done it before, I've seen it before. Tears splash in the floor when I open the door for She acting like a whore and I'm a letter. Learn from Project Pat. This is a concept video for 2x2 two two or planar systems. So we've already talked about uh, linear systems with constant coefficients when it comes to systems of differential equations. Um, here we're going to consider a specific case, the case where A is a 2x2 two two matrix, hence the name 2x2 two two system. So A is going to look like this. It's going to have four components. We'll call the components A11, A12, A13, or sorry, not A13. A21 and A22. So the eigenvalues of A um, we can find by looking at A minus lambda i. It's going to be A11 minus lambda, A21, A12, and A22 minus lambda. If we take the determinant of this, It's going to equal a11 minus lambda times a22 minus lambda uh, minus a12 times a21. And if you multiply all that out, you should get uh, lambda squared minus a11 plus a22 times lambda uh, plus a11, A22, minus A12, A21. So if you notice, this is just the sum of the diagonal entries of A. And we call that the trace of A. So this is going to be the trace of A. And if you look closely, you'll see this is the determinant of A. These two entries multiplied. Um, minus these two entries multiplied. So this is the determinant of A. And instead of writing trace A and determinant A every time, we're just going to call this capital T. Uh, sorry. Capital T times lambda, and the determinant will be capital D. We want to set this equal to zero. So this is the characteristic polynomial. And if we solve this using the quadratic equation for lambda, we get that lambda equals t plus or minus square root of t squared minus 4d over 2. And this shows us that we have three different cases for our eigenvalues, depending on the sign of what's under the square root. So our three cases are, um, the first case is, that t squared minus 4d is positive, so the square root has a positive underneath, so we get two real roots. And each of these roots have what's called an algebraic multiplicity. Multiplicity of, well, I'll write this out, multiplicity of 1. So Lambda 1 and lambda 2, both the eigenvalues have an algebraic multiplicity of 1. That means they only show up once. Our second case is when t squared minus 4d is negative. So that gives us two complex roots. And each of these have an algebraic multiplicity of 1. And to clarify what algebraic multiplicity means even more, um, it means that when we factor this characteristic polynomial, um, each um, factor only appears once. So for the first two cases, we would have got a lambda 1 and a lambda 2 that are separate and have their own factors. For a third case, that is not the case. Um, we have t squared minus 4d equaling 0, which gives us only one real root. So that 
means this root comes up twice, so it has an algebraic multiplicity of 2. So its characteristic polynomial, once factored, would look like this. Lambda minus lambda 1 squared. So when um, finding our solutions, we need, for a 2 by 2 system, We need two linearly independent fundamental solutions. So it turns out for, and these fundamental solutions we'll call y1 and y2. So for the first two cases, um, since we have two distinct eigenvalues will get distinct eigenvectors which will lead to linearly independent solutions so we have distinct eigenvalues which lead to distinct eigenvectors which guarantee linear independence so whenever we have distinct eigenvalues we're going to get linearly independent eigenvectors um, for the third case, that is not always going to be true. Um, and the way we kind of assign a value to this is we say for distinct eigenvalues, um, we're always guaranteed that each eigenvector um, will have it, or each eigenvalue will have a geometric multiplicity of 1. So every eigenvalue has at least a geometric multiplicity of 1. That means it's eigen. Um, vector span a space of dimension 1. But for case 3, um, we only have one uh, eigenvalue. So there are two cases. Um, we could get geometric multiplicity of 2, which means we have two linearly independent vectors. Or we could get a geometric multiplicity of 1, which means we only have one linearly independent vector, which means we need to find another linearly independent eigenvector. So we'll go through how to find that. So let's start with the first case. Um, our first case is distinct real eigenvalues. And this is what we've been doing um, in the last section. So we'll have lambda 1, which equals t minus the square root of t squared minus 4d over 2. And we'll have lambda 2, which equals t plus the square root of t squared minus 4d over 2. And lambda 1 is not going to equal lambda 2. So we'll get y1 equaling e to the lambda 1t, fix that, lambda 1t times v1, and y2, which equals e to the lambda 2t v2, and our total solution will be c1, e to the lambda 1t v1, plus c2, e to the lambda 2t v2. So this is what we've done, so don't need to go into more detail on that.